Dear participants, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. It is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Verma, Professor Sushmita Narayana and Professor Devabrata Das from IIM Mumbai. So this is 10th lecture of module 3 that is analytics in supply chain management module. So in the last lecture that is lecture 9, we showed it to you like how step by step the python code could be run and you could get the regression tree output using the data demand.csp. So, I request all of the participants to please try this out uh, by yourself and do the hands on so that you can get the same output uh, using this data demand.csp and same regression tree. Okay. Now, in this lecture particularly we will see like what is the performance of the model like we have developed the model like in the previous case we went up to depth 2 of regression tree and got the output and the output was a prediction model. So, given the uh, data of retailer okay, given the data of retailer whether it is located in uh, urban area, semi urban area, rural area, which region it is, west, east, north, south, how much balance credit it has, what is the age of the retail store, what is the size of the retail store, whether promotion was given or not and how many holidays it has. Based on these characteristics, I can find out what would be the demand. But if you look into the regression tree, although I had region, balance credit, location, age, size, promotion and holidays as independent variable, but the model used only three independent variables like size of the store, promotion and age. The region, then balance credit amount, location, holidays were not used. Okay. So, I was just wondering what could be the performance of the model. So, how do I do this? So, for that we have to actually find out the performance measurement, the forecasting model uh, like one of the measurement tool is mean square error. Okay. So, the formula is you can look it over here. So, I will explain this formula. So, y i is the actual value. Okay y i is the actual value and predicted value is y i hat. Okay. So, I have actual value, I have predicted value which I am getting from the regression tree. Similarly, I have actual value and I have predicted value. So, actually this particular retailer did not place an order, but the model is predicting that they will place an order of 943 units and so on. So, therefore, I have y i and I have y i hat. I need to find out the difference y i minus y i hat. So, that is the error term. Okay. Now, error square. Okay. So, I am doing it error square and then summing it up for all the observations and dividing it by number of observations. Okay. So, that is the formula of mean square error. Okay. So, now mean means average and squared of error term. So, therefore, uh, this is how the formula looks like. So, I have how many n in this case since I am doing it for the test data I have 300 observations. So, 700 observations I have used it for training data. So, I will not use that 700 observation to test the model. So, I am using the test uh, data set and finding out the MAC. So, MAC for the test data set is coming out to be 56,62,511. Okay. So, this is the uh, mean squared error one of the performance measurement for forecasting model. Now, in the like Python uh, we can use this code 
since we have not explained this part, I am explaining it over here. So, from sklearn, there is a library called sklearn in python, I am importing matrices. Okay. So, then y predict underscore test is equal to regression underscore tree, we have the regression tree uh, which we built and then I am predicting for the x test. So, x test is the data which we kept aside, so I am using that data, test data and then I am actually finding out the predicted value as well as actual value. So, if you see this, you will get this output. So, if you write this code, we will show it towards the end in Google Colab also. For all 300 test data, I have the actual predicted value, actual value and I can also find out the predicted value. Okay. So, this portion of the code will tell me what was the actual value of y and what is the predicted value. So, for each retailer I have the actual demand, I also have the predicted demand and I can find out the deviation, find the, then the deviation square that will give me the MAC. Now, from sklearn dot import matrix I am importing mean squared error. Okay. So, from the sklearn then I am importing this matrix and within that matrix there is a mean squared error formula is already written. So, if I call it out and use it for this particular data set, I will be able to get the value of MAC. So, 56,62,511 is my MAC value. Now, the question is can I reduce this MAC? You can see actually there are some discrepancy between actual data and predicted data. So, if this discrepancy reduces, obviously my MAC will also reduce because the difference between y and y i hat reduces then the MSC value also will reduce. So, the question is how can I reduce this difference between y i and y i hat, how can I reduce the value of MSC. So, now if you recall in the regression tree we had gone up to depth 2, is not it? First node 0 to node 1 and node 2, then node 1 is split it further node 3 and node 4, node 2 is split it further into node 5 and node 6. So, we have gone up to depth 2. Now, if we go and increase the depth of the tree, so what is your expectation? I will be expecting that my expect my predicted value uh, will be much better that is what I am expecting. So, now what we have done? We are we have increased the depth of the regression tree and run a small simulation. So, the output of the simulation is shown over here. So, what we have done? We have increased the depth of the regression tree. Initially, it was 2 and if I can see for the test data, the MAC value was 56,62,511. For training data, it is 59,96,000. 464. So, then we have increased the depth of the tree. If we increase the depth of the decision tree, you can see in these values also that continuously my MAC value is reducing. So, the same thing I have plotted it over here as depth of the regression tree increases the blue dotted line you can see which is for the training data my MAC value is keep on reducing. Can you say why? And it will keep on reducing if I increase the depth of the regression tree. I can keep on increasing the depth of the regression tree, I can keep on splitting the node. If I keep on splitting the node again and again, again and again, at the end I will have only one observation in each node. If I have only one observation in each node, I know the value of the y for that observation. So, that would be my predicted value and for the training data, it will like behave perfectly well and I will get MAC value is 0, if I keep on increasing the depth of the regression tree. So, it is possible that this value will tend to 0 for training data. Okay. But training data is the data which I am using it and building the model. So, therefore, I have to 
consider the test data. So, training data I should not use it for checking the performance of the regress entry model. In that matter, I should not use training data to check the performance of any machine learning model. We have to see the test data. Now, if you look into the test data, the interesting phenomenon is happening. So, now initially the depth from 2 to 3, I can see there is a reduction in MSC value. Then 3 to 4, again there is reduction in MSC value. 4 to 5, again there is reduction. But if I go from 5 to 6, increase in MSC, then increase in MSC, increase in MSC, increase in MSC, increase in MSC. And that is what it is happening. So, initially for the test data, my MSC value is reducing and then after that it started increasing. Okay. So, now if I compare the training data versus test data and their MSC values, as you increase the depth of the regression tree starting from 2 depth, if I go up to 12 depth, the training data MSC value is keep on reducing and it will keep on reduce uh, based on the uh, theory of regression tree. But for the test data, after some time it again started increasing. Okay. So, this phenomena is called overfitting. Okay. So, therefore, we have to be very, very careful that I should not focus on training data and its performance. I have to see the test data and its performance. So, in the test data, if I see the MAC value, it seems that this is the point which is giving me the minimum MAC. So, this point is actually against the value 5. That is, if the depth of the regression tree is 5, then on the test data, I am seeing the best performance. So, maybe I can use 5 as a depth of the regression tree and build my prediction algorithm. So, I will use instead of depth 2, I will use depth as 5, then run the regression model, then whatever output I will get that would be my predicted value and the MSC value suggested that will give me the best prediction as far as regression tree model is concerned. So, 5 seems to be optimum depth of the regression tree. Okay. But if I see the training data performance, the MSC value is keep on reducing, keep on reducing. So, this phenomena is called overfitting. Okay. So, in the training data model is perform, performing very nicely and I should not fall in that trap and keep on increasing the depth of the decision tree. I have to see the test data. So, this is called uh, overfitting of the model. If you only look into the training data, then the model will be overfitted and it will not perform well in the test data. So, now the question is uh, like is there any way to overcome this overfitting issue? Yes, there are ways. So, researchers have developed a random forest algorithm which will help me to get rid of this overfitting issue of uh, decision tree. So, decision tree has like two like algorithm classification tree as well as uh, regress entry. In this class, we are focusing on regress entry. In one of the previous lectures where we talked about maintenance prediction, uh, we used classification entry. So, random forest can be used for both classification entry as well as a regress entry. So, this will help me to get rid of the issue of overfitting. So, now let us see what is a random forest algorithm and how it helps me to get rid of overfitting issue. So, this is overall steps of random forest algorithm as the word is forest mentioned over here. Forest means collection of trees. So, in the machine learning concept, forest means collection of trees. So, what are the trees here? If we focus on regression, then it will be regression tree. If I focus on classification, it will be classification tree. So, mainly I need 
more number of trees okay so more number of trees more number of models so this particular phenomena is called ensemble modeling so instead of building one model instead of building one tree we will build multiple models multiple tree so if i have multiple model multiple trees obviously the model will be robust and i'll get a better predicted value which will be robust okay so now let's see how to do this how to build many models so random forest means i need more number of trees how can i build more number of trees using the data so i have initial data with me so let us say this is my training data i have i need to create multiple model out of it so i am creating k number of models okay i am creating k number of models so how do i create k number of models to create k models i need k different sample k different set of observations okay so how do i create k different set of observations i can do this using the technique called bootstrap sampling so this is also called sample with replacement so let us say i have 700 training data with me so instead of putting all 700 training data into one model and get only one predicted value we are creating k number of different models the k value uh, could be find out using optimization technique what should be the optimum number of k okay so that we will talk about later so let us say you are using k number of models k could be 20 or 30 it could be 100 assume that 100 decision tree models you are building but to build that i need 100 such uh, sample data that sample data i can create using bootstrap sampling that is sampling with a replacement so i will have k different sample so this is my sample 1 this is sample 2 this is sample k so i have k different sample that means k different observation so in each model observations are different so now once we make randomness in the observations then see there are features also in this model we have seven independent variables we had age we had region we had location we had size we had promotion we had number of holidays and so on and if you recall we only use three variables in the simple regression tree model the rest of the variables were not used so the idea behind random forest is in each model or in each tree by using bootstrap sampling my observations are random okay observations are randomized my observations are randomized i am also randomizing my features okay features are also randomized so in each model in each this is entry i am using bootstrap sampling technique to get different observation so if i have k number of models let us say this is my model 1 in this case i am using regression tree regression tree 1 i will have regression tree 2 i will have regression tree 3 and so on dot 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 i will have regression tree so k so i have k regression tree model each model my observations are different so of course there will be few common observations uh, which will be there in like multiple models but if i compare all models same exact same observations will not be there in two model so therefore observations are randomized since i have used sampling with replacement technique i'll get different observations in first model 
I will have different observations in second model, I will have different observations in third model, I will have different observation in kth model. So, observations are different. Then features are also randomized. So, I had 7 features variable. So, features will be randomly selected, maybe 3 features will be randomly selected in each iteration, in each model. So, therefore, features are randomly selected, samples are also randomly selected. So, the model which we are getting regression tree 1 in which I will have like samples which are randomly selected, I will have features which are randomly selected and I will get the output. Similarly, regression tree model 2 different observations features are also randomized and so on. So, I will get k different models, I will get k different predicted value. So, let us say y 1 hat is the predicted value I am getting, y 2 hat I am getting the predicted value from model 2, y k hat I am getting the predicted value of model k. I will take the average of all of this. So, what is the average? y 1 hat plus y 2 hat plus dot dot plus y k hat divided by k. So, that is my prediction. So, instead of one predicted value from one regression entry, I am getting k predicted value from k different regression entry taking their average. So, that is my predicted value. So, instead of y 1 hat, y 2 hat dot dot y k hat, I will take the average of k models and I would be expecting that this will be much robust prediction compared to a single model. Single model easy to interpret, but if I have multiple models, multiple prediction and take their average that will be much more robust that will definitely give a better performance in the test data. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this is the whole uh, technique about random forest. So, if I just quickly summarize once again. So, what we are doing in a random forest instead of developing one regression entry or one classification entry, I am using number of trees, forest means number of trees. So, in this case we are developing k trees. So, how can I develop k trees? I need k samples, I need different features. So, for each tree whether it is regression entry or classification entry samples are different because I am using bootstrap sampling method which is sampling with replacement samples are different and also features are also randomized. So, each model features are different, samples are different. So, therefore, predicted value which I am getting will also be different and if I take the average of all predicted value I will get the model uh, prediction. So, this is my model prediction. Okay. Now, this is for regress entry. So, what will happen? Same thing will happen for classification entry also. The steps are exactly same. I have to do sampling. So, I will use k data set, k different sample, samples with replacement. So, samples will be different. Then I will use the technique called feature like randomization of features. So, in each classification entry, I will have different observations, I will have different features, I will get a predicted value. So, let us assume that classification entry 1 is predicting the class C 1, classification entry 2 predicting as class 2 and there are k. Okay. So, now I can have only 2 class, class 1 or class 2. Out of this k, which class will appear more, I will take that as my best predicted value. Okay. So, that is called maximum frequency of classes. So, let us say k equal to 100 and I got C 1 67 time and C 2 33 time. So, my voting will tell me that your prediction is C 1 because that is appearing for more number of time. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the idea is same instead of one model, 
develop multiple models and the result which you would get would be more robust compared to a single model ok. So, now we understood this technique. So, what we did we use random forest regression from SKLearn module. So, we have SKLearn under that ensemble models are there and one of the ensemble model is random forest regressor. So, I am importing that in random forest regressor I have to mention number of estimators. The number of estimators means how many trees are there in the forest. So, I am assuming 20 trees are there. I can change this value and find out what is the optimum value. So, that is called parameter tuning. So, we are not going into the details of it, but I would suggest all the participants to know more about parameter tuning and find out what should be the optimum number of estimator or what should be the optimum number of trees in the random forest which you can find out using parameter tuning technique. And the maximum depth I am taking 5 because we have seen in the regression tree uh, that in the test data if I keep maximum depth as a 5 it is giving me the lowest uh, mean square error. So, using these two parameters we are running the model and we got this as my output. So, in this case I cannot print 20 decision tree. So, therefore, I am not printing the random forest over here, but I will show you the output. So, now again how do I measure the performance of the model? I am using mean square error the same formula which you used uh, for the simple regression tree model. We are calculating the MAC values for the test data. So, I have 300 observations which we kept for the for test testing purpose. So, for each 300 observation I have the actual value y i I have predicted value y i hat I can calculate M A C using this formula and if you see the M A C value has been significantly reduced ok. So, earlier now it is 37 lakh 21603 and earlier it was how much you can see uh, if I use regression tree depth 5 it is around 44 lakh like more than 44 lakh and now it has reduced to around 37 lakh and so on. So, I can see a significant reduction in significant reduction in mean square error if I use random forest algorithm compared to simple regress entry. So, in both the cases I have kept depth as 5, but I have increased the number of trees in the random forest. So, instead of one model we have now developed 20 models and based on this 20 model output I have taken the average and got the predicted value. So, therefore, you can see the MAC value for the test data this is for the test data it has reduced significantly if I use a random forest. So, compared to simple regress entry if I use random forest regress entry obviously, I will get a better result that is what it is showing for this particular data set ok. Now, the question is how do you select the uh, best forecasting model? In this case we have compared regress entry and random forest and the random forest is showing uh, better result for the test data as far as MAC is concerned. So, there are some steps which you need to follow. Uh, first you need to understand the data like what is the relationship between dependent variable, independent variable, whether independent variables are interlinked among each other or not. And now if there is if the data is not clean I have to clean the data, if the data is outlier we have to do the treatment, if the data is missing. So, therefore, 
we first need to understand the data in, in detail. Okay. Then we need to choose the evaluation matrix. So, in this case since we are using forecasting model, uh, there are few evaluation matrix are there. We have used MSE in our case, uh, but there are other matrix as well. So, what are these matrix? I will quickly explain. The error term is forecasted term minus actual demand. So, this is my predicted value this is my actual value, this is actual demand, this is forecasted demand. So, F t minus d t is error. Okay. Then mean square error, the error square I am summing, summing it up and then divided by number of observation, this is m a c. Then there is a mean absolute division. So, instead of taking square, I am taking the absolute value of the error term and then dividing it with the number of observation. Then we have mean absolute percentage error M A P E. I am taking the error term and dividing it by the actual demand and take the abs absolute value <coughs> and then multiplying with 100 divided by n which will give me mean absolute percentage error. Then there is a bias which is calculated like sum of all the error term. Okay. If this error term is like very high positive, if this summation is very high positive value. So, what will happen? My error is always most of the time error is positive. So, that is not good. So, the average this bias term should be e close to 0. If it is close to 0, then sometimes I am overestimating, sometimes I am underestimating, uh, sometimes value is more than the actual value, sometimes predicted value is less than the actual value. So, that is good, it is fluctuating around 0, the error term should fluctuate in and around 0. So, if I get very high positive bias or very uh, negative value of bias, both the cases the model is not perfect, either it is overestimating or it is underestimating continuously. So, therefore, we have to look into it properly. Then there is a tracking signal. Uh, it is bias divided by mean absolute deviation. So, depending upon your problem nature, depending upon your data, you have to see which matrix you should choose. Like in our case, we have chosen MAC, uh, sometimes you may choose MAP also, sometimes you may choose MAD also. So, depending upon your scenario, depending upon your context, you have to first decide which matrix should I use to evaluate the uh, performance of the forecasting model. Then once you use that matrix, uh, we will use that, then I have to split the data, training data, testing data, validation data, uh, we will develop the model on training data, then test it using some other data. Then I should not only focus on like two algorithm, I need to experiment with various algorithm. In this case, we have done regression tree and random forest, but you could go into XG like boosting. Uh, gradient boosting algorithm. So, if the data pattern is complex, if it, if it is dynamic in nature, maybe boosting algorithm could give you uh, better result. So, therefore, you should not only rely on one or two forecasting model, you should experiment with multiple forecasting algorithm and find out which one is giving you uh, lesser forecast error, go ahead with that. Then there is an important concept called hyperparameter tuning. I need to fine tune the parameters. Like in our case, while we were doing the uh, random forest or regression tree, I had depth of the tree as one parameter. Then in the random forest, how many trees are there? So, these are called hyperparameter. I need to tune it and find out what is the optimum value of this. There is a technique called grid search, then random search, all of this I can use it to find out the best value of the uh, hyperparameter. Then I have to also consider the interpretability of the model. If the model becomes so complex and the manager cannot interpret it, then there is no use of it. So, therefore, you have to also take care the model which you are developing it, it should be very easy to interpret and the person who is using this model can interpret it easily. Then the last is resource constraint 
I can develop a very fascinating model, but it needs let us say cloud computing facility, large database, large server and I do not have that. So, obviously then I cannot implement this model. These are few important like point which you need to uh, keep in mind uh, while you are deselecting the forecasting model. Okay. So, with this uh, we will stop this lecture over here. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.